Hello, everybody. So I just finished watching the Fallout TV show today and I've rewatched all of the episodes twice because my family wanted to catch up and watch it with me. So I watched it for that reason and also to pick up as much uh, foreshadowing and hidden details as I could before discussing it with you guys. Um, we're going to start off the video by talking about some details regarding the show that don't uh, give any spoilers away. So off the bat, we're just going to say that the artistic direction, the artistic vision, done very well. I liked it. It was pretty. A lot of it was taken right out of the Fallout universe, and you can't complain about that at all. Um, the storyline also taken pretty much right out of a Fallout universe, and can't really complain about that. I mean, there's two games, th almost pretty much three games that kind of copy the same storyline here. Um, so, that's good. Um, they changed a lot of canon, a lot of lore, uh, a lot of the foundation that they, you know, were supposed to build off of, they changed. Um, we're going to talk about that in, in just a second. Um, but if you're going into this show as a Fallout fan, who knows a lot about Fallout, you'll still enjoy it. You're just going to be a little bit taken aback by certain changes they've made. Um, and if you're going into the series as a brand new Fallout fan, uh, who's never played any of the games at all, uh, well, welcome. Uh, and also, you're going to love it, because there is, uh... You know, you don't know anything that they're changing anyway, so there's nothing for you to possibly get upset over. It's a good show, it's well made, and if you're just going into it as, like, you're trying to enjoy a show, then you're going to enjoy the show. But now, we're going to start discussing some spoilers and some changes, so, you know, buckle up. They changed how ghouls work. They are now indestructible magic creatures that are pretty much wolverine. You shoot them anywhere and they recover. The, the wound grows over the hole and they're fine. Anywhere but the head, that is. They can survive anything but getting shot in the head. They're like weird zombies almost now with, with hyper intelligence or at least, you know, average intelligence. They get to retain the intelligence they had um, until they turn feral. Um, I also want to discuss some of the foreshadowing that I mentioned that I, that I noticed. So foreshadowing number one was the market lady was like, oh, you're in Philly. The market lady in Philly was like, oh, you're a pretty lady and you made it this far. You should turn back and go home, lass. And, she, and you got all ten fingers. Well, in the very next episode, she bites the ghoul's finger off. So the ghoul cuts her finger off. There's some foreshadowing. Wow, look at that. Um, also, there's a little bit of foreshadowing regarding um, in Vault 4, when they escape the, the, you know, I guess not really escape, when they get let go, uh, and Maximus takes the power core to power his armor. She's like, hey, you should give that power core back. My dad would never love me again if... If you knew, I let an entire civilization die uh, just to, you know, come and find him. Well, the foreshadowing to that is that her dad destroyed all of Shady Sands out of jealousy. So, what little do we know? Um, and that's another thing I wanted to get into. Shady Sands is now destroyed, which is ridiculous. I just played Fallout 1 a couple days ago, uh, and it was very much alive. Now it's not. Now it's gone. Uh, so I guess the timing of this show probably takes place, like, in 2300. Or, like, yeah, because 2277 is when they said the bomb fell. So 30 years after that, let's just say. Because Lucy in Vault 4 said she was 11, I think her name was. And Maximus looked like he's about late 20s, early, you know, probably maybe 30. So we're probably in about 2300. That's the year that we're sitting in. We also have confirmed potentially that the NCR is pretty much all gone. The last contingent chapter that we know of, at least in the show, was run by Moldaver, who is said to have been a communist and also puts a weird taste in my mouth regarding NCR um, because the NCR was supposed to be kind of like this new chapter of America trying to rebuild a greater world and they completely fell apart and were run by lunatics. I mean, in the first episode, they show that the NCR raiders have no table manners, they're animalistic creatures, they're, they're, they're fiends, pretty much. Which is no way for a new government to behave, it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know why they went with that artistic decision making. That was the only caveat I had with that. Um, now I wanted to discuss the Fallout Power Armor. 
Uh, they showed purpose for the holes in the pauldrons. It was to lower them from vertebrates, but that kind of takes away from the badassery of them just jumping out of the vertebrates with their jetpacks. They, we also show that they don't have jetpacks anymore. They have jet wristbands that, you know, different type of jetpack, but it's on the arms now, which is going to take some getting used to. Um... I also like the jab they made at Fallout 3 players when Thaddeus shot at Lucy and Maximus in the radio station and he was like, fuck, I can't hit anything without a, without a scope. Well, in Fallout 3, you couldn't hit anything without a fucking scope and there's no iron sights, you couldn't hit shit. Fallout New Vegas kind of fixed it and Fallout 4 definitely fixed it, but I found that to be kind of like a funny little jab. Um, I have some questions of, of, of continuity. Um, unless those two raiders in the Super Duper Mart were badass gunslingers with a thousand fucking small gun skill, how did they land headshots on all those ghouls in rapid succession, but none of the people of Philly could hit the ghoul in the head? He wasn't even trying to dodge. He was walking in a straight line and got hit 30 times in the chest and just absorbed the bullets like it was nothing. That was a little fucking retarded, in my opinion. What are you going to do about it, though? Um, I mean, the ghoul is easily my favorite character. Don't get me wrong. He's, he's very fun. Like, he, they gave him the best lines. Uh, you know, thou shalt always get sidetracked by bullshit or whatever. That's very Fallout. Um, they also introduced a new drug that they don't really fully explain, but the vials, it's what keeps ghouls from going feral. Uh, it could be like Radaway or Radex or Jet or maybe some kind of concoction of something, but you take it in a asthma inhaler like Jet, but it's definitely not Jet, but they don't really further explain what it is. Um, but uh, the cold fusion was being created by Moldaver for 200 years well, I guess 200 years before the bombs fell. But if she's this old, it doesn't really explain how she even survived this long. It doesn't make sense to me. She, it doesn't say she was cryogenically frozen. She didn't work with the vaults, and she's not a ghoul. So what's the deal with that? Um, but I guess we'll, we'll see. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see her as the one of the last leaders of like some NCR contingent. Uh, also, Hank ends up being uh, an enemy, Hank McLean. He, he destroys Shady Sands, he's a bad guy, he works for Vault Tech, and I think this kind of ties into like some of the pre-existing game lore. So in Fallout 76, Vault 76's main objective is to uh, reclaim missile silos to destroy, in my opinion, any of Vault Tech's enemies that will take place in the wasteland. And then after destroying said enemies, they will use the Garden of Eden creation kit, which contains cold fusion energy. I don't think they completely buried it. I think they just used it for the Garden of Eden creation kit. Um, they will use the Gek to build over the, the rubble of their enemies um, after destroying them with all of the pre-war weapons that they gained access to. Um, and that's the thing. It's like we kind of saw this capitalistic cabal work together at the end of the uh, at the end of the season to figure out how they're going to be the new kings and queens of of the wasteland and which experiments are going to work the best. Which also kind of comes into Mister House. So Mister House, we met him in the last episode, um, and he's the leader of Robco. And I think we're going to come to find out that the canon ending to New Vegas is probably the. Mr. House ending, which is fine because that's my favorite ending, but with NCR being gone, we don't see the Caesar's Legion and the Brotherhood clearly being the canon ending for Fallout 4 coming in in the Pridwin. Um, I think we're going to start seeing some Mr. House, but in the Wasteland, which should be quite interesting. Um, I'm not entirely sure what happened to the ghoul's wife, but it could very well be, she could very well be one of Bud's buddies in the cryostasis lab. It would make a lot of sense and she was very high in management. Um, or she could be a robo-brain like Bud, uh, but doing something else in a different vault, or maybe even in the same vault. We, we're not, I'm not entirely sure, but she definitely had some kind of high, high ranking uh, position. But it just doesn't make sense to me because in the first episode, they say that he was paying alimony, which means that him and his wife divorced or broke up or something, but it doesn't show that in the show. 
um, and it shows that he's still searching for his family in the show. So I'm, I'm wondering if he's just trying to like find her to say sorry for something or or if they didn't break up or I'm not entirely sure why they sprinkled that line in, but I guess we'll find out more. I think that's the thing going into second season is a lot of my complaints will probably be addressed in the second season, but until then I have concerns and, and some confusions. And um, yeah, mainly the ghoul indestructibility is a problem. Uh, and that's another thing, when Thaddeus gets like shot in the neck, the uh, arrow, when he pulls it out, it just heals, but it, it leaves a mark, like you kind of see scarification. When the ghoul gets attacked, you never see any scarification, it just heals perfectly and, and there's no problem. So that's, that's definitely an interesting artistic decision. Um, now, the Shady Sands refugees in Vault 4 having a blood and ashes cult uh, is a little interesting and rambunctious, and I don't think Folos ever really explored that level of whatever that was. There's definitely a lot of scenes in the show that get you, you know, going, what am I watching? But, uh, I don't know, it was a very good show. Like, there's just so many parts of it that you can look back at it and just think about it, and you're like, wow, that's... That's fun. That's something, you know. Like that's that's definitely different than what what I'm used to with modern TV making. And of course, they still include certain things to appeal to every demographic, but um, they don't do it in any aggressively annoying or overt ways. They do it in a very well that could fit in the Fallout universe, I guess, kind of way. Kind of like how they use stim packs, but don't have to explain them. They just use them. They. Kind of like how you do in the game. You find a stim pack, it gives you HP, you don't complain, you don't question it, it just fucking works, man. It just works. Wise words from Todd Howard. And um, as much changes as we're seeing, like these vials to keep ghouls from going feral, um, they're starting to kind of f find their, their home into the canon. I just wish that they used pre-existing canon to build off of a little bit further. I don't know why they have to go so heavy into pre-existing, you know, canon and build off of that. Um, when there's so much area to, to explore all over America. Um, and, and all they're really doing is giving themselves a challenge to not step on the fans' toes uh, with the pre-existing lore. But all in all, uh, I think... I think we're pretty good, like, the show's good, much better than expectations, and I think uh, everyone's a lot more pleased with it than, than they expected to be. Um, I think Maximus pretty much just did what we all would do, I mean, you join the Brotherhood to get armor and then you dip, that's, that's literally the whole point of the Brotherhood, let's be real. Um, and yeah, like, you just gotta watch it. And if you did see it, let me know what you think I missed. Let me know what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Let me know if you're gonna watch season two, if you're very excited for it. Um, let me know if you think my speculation is off or maybe potentially correct, I don't know, or, or anything like that. But uh, I'm at work right now, so I'm gonna get back to it. I just wanted to share some of my thoughts. And uh, yeah, goodbye everybody.